All right, so I got all the fairings removed. And uh, I think from here I'm gonna clean everything up while I got it open. And I'll, I'll run the motor for 15 minutes or so and make sure nothing's leaking. Got the coolant topped off. Uh, what I ended up doing was for the heated grips, I ran the wire and I followed this cable here, went through here, ran the cable down, followed down through here, up into here, and then into the battery area. That's where I put that um, the relay that I ran. All those wires I tucked back up into here and I got the rear back on. So it looks it looks okay. I mean, it's still a lot of wires just for for heated grips. And um, the other thing I installed was this uh, tire pressure monitoring system. And it does a uh, battery voltage too. And when I get the piece back in here, I'm just going to stick it right there so I can look down and see. And then the other side, I ordered the USB cable, I don't know, three months ago. So when it decides to show up, I'll have that. Uh, this is what this side looks like without a fairing as well. Uh, so it should be really easy to, to run it for a while here and just look for any more leaks. Um, I did have that one leak on the, what was that, the coolant pump weak hole for oil. And they just repaired that. So um, either I was running low on coolant in the first service and they didn't catch it. Or it's ate a little bit of coolant. Or... You know, when they repaired that uh, weep hole, I imagine maybe some coolant came out there and they just never topped it off. So it could be any of the above. Um, but I did end up going to Walmart and buying this coolant here. People might not agree with it. But when I look at the specs, it pretty much meets everything that the uh, manual said that we needed for specs is 17 bucks for a gallon. And it looks the exact same color as what was in there. So. It should be good. I didn't really need a lot to top it off. Um, so yeah, this is what it looks like when I turn it on. I got my heated grips here. I got the different colors you can choose from to get to your heat settings. Uh, the TPMS, I don't have the sensors on the tire yet, so they're just blinking red because I can't find a sensor. And uh, other than that, now I, got a, I have a 4 amp fuse in there and I can always change the fuse. I got a four amp circuit now to tie anything else I want to. And then I'll have a uh, two amp circuit still for the USB when it comes in. And I won't have to worry about trying to pull, you know, the, the all the amperage needed for the heated grips and the cell phone and the TPMS. It'll all be separate, which is originally I was just going to tap into the USB cable because that's what some people have done. but. And it'd probably be fine, but I just, I don't know. I, I know this has a four amp fuse in it by itself. So, uh, all right, I guess that's, that's it for the update. All right, well, I got everything off, all the bearings off the side. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run it for 10 minutes to see if I got any leaks anywhere before I put it all back together. So, once you get the fairings off, I guess I do need to move these two bolts out. Somebody said to relocate the tank up here would be easier. Uh, but first, the next step was find these little circular holes and shove these little rubber spacers in. So, if you look in the honeycomb, you get one every once like that. Every once in a while, that's like that, where there's just a, a hole there. And what I'm finding is like if I shove it in here, I mean it's kind of hard to hold the phone and do this at the same time, but basically you just shove it in the hole and then spin it and just keep rotating it and eventually it'll pop through. And then it'll look like that. Alright, so as you can see there's six of these little rubber things. And once you get them shoved in, that's what it looks like. You got the little rubber thing there. And they're in those um 
those circular holes there. Alright, now to try to figure out what EvoTech is trying to say to do in the next step. Their manual is kind of stupid. It has no words. It's just some shitty photos uh, that are hand sketched very shittily as well. So, uh, alright, let's see you in the next part here. Okay, I guess, well, next I'm supposed to put six of these uh, little tab foam things. Uh, on each side here. I guess that's what the photo is saying to do. All right, so I got these six foam pads on. Uh, I guess as closely evenly spaced as I could. Showed them a little bit elevated on the thing, not not right on the ends here, um, but on the edge. So that's how I did it as best I could with my crooked eyeballs. Um, so. From what the instructions look like, you're supposed to loosen these two bolts or take them out, it looked like. And same on the other side, it said. And then from what I could decipher from the photo, you pull this back and I guess the other side back a little bit and just shove this in there and set it on there. And then you bolt it back down. So I'm going to give that a go. Maybe that'll work. Okay, so I got the... Uh, Four bolts removed and as you see this is loose uh, it's still held on by one bolt same with the other side whatever that is um, if you if you got one of these it makes everything a lot easier it's just a four millimeter uh, hex bolt on a socket uh, so once that's off I'm gonna try to shove it up there and set it on top the radiator I guess and see how it fits so I guess it just sits on top and you do need to loosen those two bolts to get this to swing out a little bit. But once you do, you can kind of push it up there and just push it against the radiator. And then if you look, every time I let go, I guess I gotta kind of push on the sides. I don't know, it pops out, but I guess it just sits on there from what I've been reading, just like that with these, um, these little, it's kind of hard to see. It. Yep, something like that, guys. Um, so I'll lift that up, put that back in there, and then put the bolts in and see if it just holds it in place like it's supposed to. Okay, so I think I got it. Um, this flashlight here is kind of a pointer. So, what you do is, if you look, you see, see one tab right there where that light is. And you basically set this up so it's resting on top. And you can see where the rubber spacer there is. Um, maybe you can't really see it that well. Hold on, try to zoom in. There it is, right up there. Uh, okay, you can see it a little better now in the center of the, the frame here. Uh, there's a little, that little, one of the rubber spacers, you can see what it's doing. It's just keeping it popped off the uh, radiator a little bit. And you got that one tab right there, one on the other side. And basically the edges of the guard are going to fit underneath this piece here. And so you get it squished between, it pins between um, this piece here and the back. And it basically squishes the radiator guard up against the radiator when you put these screws back in. So the guy that posted that you needed to move this tank completely off and zip tie it up here. I mean, maybe he did, but honestly, I, I didn't have a problem. Just kind of pulling back a little bit, shoving it up in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and try to wipe that dirt off. And um, the next step it says to do actually is to put the fairings all back on. And then lastly install this piece here at the bottom when everything's back together i don't know how much <laughs> difficult it's going to be to put it on verse now like if i put it on right now it's really accessible and easy so i'm kind of like yeah thinking about skipping ahead on the instruction um but i guess i'll uh, do this next little bit here where i where i put the fairings back on and um i'll uh snag you guys here in a second Real quick before I move on to uh, 
going ahead and putting the fairings back on which you can find the, the instructions for that in the service manual and it's actually don't let it intimidate you guys it's not that hard it's one two three bolts on the back side here that you have to reach up and unscrew and i take mine out of the stand and then just move the uh, wheel whichever way it's against or you know to move it out of the wheel out of the way to be able to get to the bolts easier unfortunately they they made it with allen so you got to try to fit an allen wrench back in there and somewhat um hard to get to if you try to use a socket i think like two of them i could use a socket and one of them i couldn't anyway you take those out there's a little pin that's up here um it's hard to see but where that hole is there's a little push pin that goes in there and it's real easy to push out you just get your hand behind there the first time it's a little hard but after that you just put your finger behind there and pop that pin out and then there's six bolts here on the front that come off not that one it's one two i don't know where the rest of them are you'll, you'll see them though they're really obvious um, some are connected down here onto this guy and that's it then it just falls right off so there's there's really not much to it um the first steps though it'll tell you to do is like there's an inner piece up here that has three bolts so you move those three bolts and then there's also two bolts in here somewhere but you can you can get the gist of it from the service manual it's not hard so it's three five bolts up here these three bolts back here and then the six bolts right here and it comes off unfortunately Aprila in their infinite wisdom use different size bolts for almost every dang one of them so you'll have fun playing with uh combo wrenches and shit or find the one you need um this piece here which i took off to clean the bottom piece and then i went ahead and used some wd-40 and cleaned up the bottom of the engine while i was down here sort of this side still dirty um but it just bolts on with with three uh three three bolts and those are just the uh m4 um, the four millimeter socket just takes those right off and this guy kind of connects to them watch your hoses when you go back this one stays in that side this one stays over there on that side and then you got this one in the middle here that everybody seems to burn on their exhaust you want to make sure that goes back into the hole there in the middle of uh the bottom cowl or whatever the thing is called um so i'm gonna i'm gonna try to put this back together um and we'll see where we where we are from there as far as putting this bottom piece on i'm 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 wondering why I need the weight to put this uh, bottom piece on. Maybe it's a fitting thing where you can fit it a little better. It'll stay in place. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> maybe it's just uh, <laughs> however Evo Tech decided to draw the instructions. Who the hell knows? I mean, those instructions are pretty pitiful. But as you can see, all it is is just pressure kind of fit in there from where you put these two bolts back in. And when it's in there, I mean... The, I guess you really don't need much else because between the rubber and the, the two bolts on each side kind of pressure putting pressure on the thing it's not it's not going anywhere it's pretty solid so all right uh, stand by so what I found works easiest for me when putting the bottom cowl back on is you start with this bottom left bolt and then you do this bolt and then you push this to where it's aligned for this bolt and you just do the same on both sides and then it's back in where it should be and there's three bolts here on the bottom that can come out and what i did is while i had this out i took this apart and then i took the three bolts out in the middle and then i cleaned all the little rocks and crap that were stuck in the crease there and as you can see it's nice and clean now i do have to move the hoses back where to go and i still got to reconnect the line that's in that uh clip over there but that should be pretty pretty simple to do um and and you, like i said you want to make sure the other hose is through that hole coming out down here which is not now because other people have that one some of these hoses hit the uh pipes here and they will melt so you want to make sure that you got them nice and clear and secured away from your exhaust pipes or you're going to have issues um this is kind of where it, this looks like it's going to end up here in a second when i get the other side secured I'm still debating on whether I want to just go ahead and try to screw that other piece on now or if I want to leave it. Um, 
I'm a little nervous about how, how much harder it might be once the side piece is on over here, but maybe it's not that bad at all. I mean, the other, the other fairing piece screws in here, hmm, yeah, it might be actually a lot harder to get in there later. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it as the instructions say, and then I'll let you know uh, which way not to do it. Um, all right. All right, so the bottom cowl is now on, and I got it snugged up. I got that line right there. This hose right here, you need to make sure it goes in through right here and goes over to the side here to keep it away from the exhaust, like I said. The other hose just kind of sits over there, and uh, it also has a little thing that looks like you could slide it through, which I need to go fix. And then the line connects on those little grommets over there that hold it. So everything should be away from the exhaust and it's all nice and cleaned up and good looking here. And then uh, from there, I'm gonna go ahead and bolt on the left side fairing and then I'll come and do the right side fairing first and uh, try to clean up like I see some spots from rain and stuff on the bike and then uh, move from there. All right, everybody. The hardest part of putting the fairing back on is aligning this piece here so that it's flush with the headlight. So the tip I'm gonna give you that I find kind of works good for me is I come down here and I put this bolt down here in first. That, that kind of holds this in place a little bit and lets you wiggle wobble with the front. And what you wanna do is kind of pull back on the front and slide this kind of forward here with this. And then when you put your pin in, this will slide up against this flush. And you'll be able to put that pin in the front and then bolt the rest of this down and then put your bolts on the back. But that's the only way I've found that you'll be able to do this to get this to go flush. This kind of, there's a piece in here, you kind of got to slide it up in there to get it to, to fit. Like, I, I can't remember exactly where it's at, but it kind of just slides in on top there. So just something to look at. Um, it's the hardest thing, I think, on, on installing the, uh, the fairings. It's just trying to get the headlight piece flush so it doesn't look stupid and stick out right there. So here's what I was trying to show you in the, in the, the last video there. If you look right here, you see these two clips here? Those are the clips I was talking about when I said it has to slide. You have to slide that kind of in like that so those clips engage right there. And that'll keep it so that it's flush with the headlight. If you don't have those clips engaged, it's just sitting with this, like uh, the back of where this is resting is on top of the clip. Instead of the clip being into that groove, you end up with that piece sticking out and it looking kind of bad, right? I mean, I don't think it'll hurt anything because, well, I just noticed when I was removing this, apparently the dealer took the driver's side, or the driver's side, the passenger, well, the right side fairing off. And uh, when they did, they didn't put it back on right because it was popped off the headlight when I went to take this off. But anyway, uh, there you go. <laughs> Time saving tip for anybody doing this. Um, what you got here is you, this is the little pin here that goes up underneath the headlight right there where that hole is. Let's see where my finger's pointing. It's a little blurry because you know, the iPhone kind of sucks on that. Um, I find it's easier you pull that pin out, you shove this little piece in there and then you shove the pin in and then it holds it in place rather than try to shove it in as one piece. Uh, I've done it before with one piece and it, it just takes forever. But uh, if you get smart about it and not stupid like me, uh, it, it'll it'll go a lot quicker. All right, so earlier when I said there were six bolts here in the front, I, I lied, there's only four guys. There's, well, maybe five, one here, one here, one here, and one there. And then you got your one that's connected to this guy, which has nothing to do with this fairing. So I guess there's really only four. Um, so like I said, I start down here and then I go here and then these two in that order. You could do it whatever order you want. It doesn't really matter. Uh, just telling you what was easiest for me. Um, but when you go to put these on, I like to leave them loose. Like all these are loose right now. And then uh, once I get this and I make sure once again that this is in the right spot then I tighten it down. But just to, just to tell you one more time what I did is I went this bolt here then I went to the front and put in that eye clip after I made sure that this was flush-ish, as flush as I could get it, with those clips pushed in. And then I'm gonna put in these bolts here, tighten this all down, and then reinstall the two bolts up here and then the inner piece, and then that's all there is to it. So, I mean, if you look down here, it's all nice and clean now from where I had all that oil leaking before. 
Um, and I did do a 15 minute run on the bike in idle, sitting on the stand here in neutral. And I saw no leaks at all, so it looks like the dealer got that fixed. And uh, hopefully I'll have some riding ahead. Uh, anybody have any tips on how to clean these wheels or make it so that there's not so much brake dust? But uh, the one thing that really kind of sucks is these, these wheels are red, which looks nice. But man, every time you brake, it just gets coated in dust. It just looks, just looks terrible. I mean, it looks like you'd never wash a thing a day in your life. You go wash it, and then 10 minutes later, take it out for a ride, it looks just like this. So it's really one of the most frustrating things about, about the bike. But, I mean, yeah, it's made to get muddy. All right, back to it. All right, just a quick segment since there's, um, you know, 38 different size bolts here. Um, for all you people who are like me who get things mixed up pretty easily, this bolt right here, these are right here. These are just your outside bolts that go here. And there should be, like I said, four of them. And then you, you have your three for the, the cow here. Um, and these are all four, four millimeter. Or uh, yeah, four millimeter socket. So if you're putting this back together and you go, oh no, I don't know which bolts go where. I'm gonna try to just uh, walk through it as I put these together to show you guys what size they are and where they should go. So uh, you don't have to worry about trying to keep track of it. All right. Okay, so hey, look, one, two, uh, oh yeah, the third one's up here. <laughs> uh, just when you screw it in, you should check right here and make sure that this piece is flush with this piece. And uh, yeah, not so bad. Um, just trying to get it around this guy, those little, those long ones. Like, what you want is a good, good, nice pair of like uh, short, uh, what is it, three millimeter Allen wrenches for, for up in here. Otherwise you're gonna run into this. And you could you could take it off of, uh, if you have a vise like this, or if you just, or you might even have yours down on a kickstand. Uh, if you just, you know, rotate the wheel the other way and get this out of the way, it's, it's probably a lot quicker. Um, but that, that's all there is there. And I'll move on to up here next. All right, so next you're gonna have a eight millimeter what looks like a socket head and I'm guessing that's two and a half because two is too small and three was too big and well that little key isn't uh, labeled for what it is um, but what you want is to have a nice little short one because you're gonna have to get your hands kind of like right here here in a second but this one works for this so you got that here um, so the socket goes down there where that hole is and then up here is where that other piece goes so you put this on and then you're gonna put lastly that inner piece back in here and you'll you'll be uh you'll be basically done with reassembling the left right, side so thing. as you can see i got the eight millimeter in there uh good luck getting a tool in there to tighten that it's not the easiest thing in the world to do i normally just go by hand but hey, there's torque specs, so you do you. Um, then I hand tighten this as best I can, and then I shove that little Allen in there to do it. Uh, before I do the final tight down, I normally look down here at the headlight, make sure that this piece here is still flush, I didn't lose it somewhere. And I just kind of look around and make sure everything else looks good because we're getting close to the end. Um, I got a little bit of space there, and I don't know if that's right or not, but it seems like it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we'll get this inner piece in, and then this. Uh, right, this so I gotta clean this piece up a little bit before I install it. But as you can see, this piece is uh, exactly three screws. Um, this is where I was talking about. You needed a really short. Uh, I think it's two and a half millimeter Allen key um, because you're gonna have to get in there, and if you don't move your handlebar out of the way, you're gonna be running into um, the inside there. So just be uh, just be cognizant of this. Uh, you're also gonna need a uh, number uh, Phillips screwdriver. Uh, I don't I don't know what number it is, but I mean, dime does, and everybody's got a Phillips screw. And that's gonna screw into that bolt hole right there in the center that I just focused on. And the other ones are gonna screw in there and there. As you can see, the bottom of the handlebar is gonna be kind of in the way. Um, most time I just back it off this thing and we're gonna have to move the, the handlebar left and right to be able to get in there to uh, screw those last two screws in. And then after that, that's it. You've got the fairing back together and uh, I'll, I'll still do the other side, but it's, it's pretty much just a repeat of the process. All right, so I'm getting ready to clean this up before I put it back on. One thing I will say 
is if you have a table, like a foldable table, the most handy thing I have found in the whole time doing this, other than the box fans I have in the garage because it's like 100 out, is having a table to where you can set your parts on as you go and like put screws back in or whatnot. Um, like these side pieces here, which we're gonna put on here in a second. Um, you know, I put screws back in there so I can remember where to go. And then I just put little groups of screws so I can kind of remember and then just go backwards when I go to install. Um, that's been the, the easiest thing for me to do. Um, so yeah, just, uh, just a little tip I found uh, useful for me and uh, might be useful for you. All right, so for this piece, I like to line up so that I have my screw hole here lined up first. And then I screw that one in and then just do the other two and then you're done. All right, side piece. You got two bolts here. They're both four millimeter. You got a shiny one and a black one. The black one goes on top. The shiny one goes on the bottom. Um, you want to take your piece. You got these two clips here. You, when you install it, you want to go ahead and uh, slide those up in there and then just slide it forward. And then you'll see your bolt holes line up there and your bolt hole lines up there. And uh, as you can see, I didn't uh, get that clip here to engage. So I'm gonna back it out, try again. All right, I guess you gotta kinda, you gotta get that clip up there first and then keep those back and push them up in there. There you go. And then slide it forward. And then you just put your two bolts in and that's it for the side piece. And uh, I'll show you guys on the other side too. And I did put the MIA whatever module in mine. So for anybody curious about that, I'll, I'll show you where that's at. All right, so there's a lot of jumping in this video. And uh, yeah, sorry about that. And I also just realized I filmed most of it vertical with my phone rather than, you know, the old, uh, wide screens. So, and, and some of it might jump back and forth. We just, I just don't know until, until I get this uh, put together. But uh, I'm not going to be doing a lot of editing. I'm basically just going to take all the short videos and smash them together. But what I was going to show you was that even with this installed, it still looks like I have plenty of room to get down here to put that last piece on. So I think I'm going to try try the instruction way. Um, like I said, I got this put on here. Easy peasy. Not much to it. I got this on. Just tighten those two bolts. So next, um, I'll be putting that fairing on that I've set on top of that pile of junk over there. And uh, we'll get that back on. But hey, the MIA. So this is the module here. So if anybody wants to install this, super easy. Um, all you gotta do is take off the bolt that's right here. Take off that bolt down there on the bottom. Slide this panel back to the left. You're gonna find a plug right here, and you're gonna take the MIA module. It's gonna be like a uh, plug, like a cap plug here. You're gonna pop that cap plug off, slide that in, set this bad boy in, and as you can see, your cable goes off to the right here, runs down to the bottom like that, nice and neat, and then you screw it in. Uh, I think this is just some tiny little screw that I had lying around. I think it's like an M3 or an M4, uh, looks like a three. Uh, screw and then this screw here is just like a kind of a coarse screw that I got out of the tail light <laughs> When I removed the, the back of the tail, I mean, I guess not the light but the tail tidy um, And it, it worked good for that and it looks similar to the ones that you can buy for ten dollars air quote and, and from them in the package uh, Don't waste your money on that. I can tell you right now. You'll find you'll find a screw that'll work I mean, most people just have screws lying around in a garage, but you know, go to the hardware store and for 48 cents, you got a screw that'll probably work. Um, so from there, I get the seat back on after I get the back on. Uh, the, the, I get the seat back on after I get the fairing on and uh, we'll be pretty much done and ready for a test ride. Fan. All right, one more thing I want to talk about too real quick is uh, these rear brakes here. So this squealed so bad when I bought this motorcycle. It was horrible. And when I brought it to the dealer, I mentioned it to him. I said, hey, look, while you're doing the first service, can you take a look at my rear brake? It's squealing. Um, 
I thought they did, but to my surprise when I got home, it still squealed real loud. You said a lot of times uh, rocks, like little rocks like to get in here from the, from the wheels. Um, I don't know if that's bullshit or if it's truth. It didn't really look that bad. Um, so like I replaced the brake pads with, with these right here um, and they stopped squealing. Here are the factory pads. They didn't really look that bad to me. Um, I guess there is a little kind of scoring here, but I tried to sand them down and put them back on. It didn't do anything. I tried to put this like uh, brake stuff on the back, this brake footing here. It didn't really work that well. Um, so anyway, I ended up just buying uh, these EBCs and didn't even bother putting these shims on there. Uh, I read online you really don't want to, I guess, when you buy EBCs, but I wanted to keep these pads to have these shims in case I ever do go back in stock. Um, real quick, if you do know to do this job, uh, one, uh, <clears throat> the torque spec I looked at at first was not uh, not right, and as you can see, I kind of sort of rounded those a little bit, but they still come on and off just fine. Um, I will say it's just removing these two pins here. Pop this off. This is just a bleed, whatever, and this little cable goes through there. Take these off, um, then you can lift a thing right up, um, and you got this pin here that. Uh, good luck getting out. I had to use a hammer and basically force it out a little bit and then get a pair of pliers and pull it When you do here, you got this spring clip up here on the back Now the spring clip, if you look, it holds, it goes um, underneath this pin And so when I pulled that out, that piece here flung out and somewhere in this garage it landed And I spent three days looking for it and never could find it And I think it sprung up towards the ceiling somewhere Because I heard it go ka -ching! and it hit something and never saw it again so I had to order another one, which I got from Brimbo rather than um, ordering it from Aprilla because apparently it's on back order for like nine months like every other part Aprilla has. Um, but just keep in mind, when you go to put it back in, you've got to push these brake pads left and right, slide the pin in a little bit, and then push this down to slide the pin over the top of the spring clip. And I will tell you, it is really hard to push that spring clip down and get that in. If you got a second person, it'd probably be a lot easier. It took me about, uh, about 20 minutes every time I do it just to try to get that uh, on, underneath the safety pin as you push it through. And then there's this little cotter pin back here that you pull out and you slide back in on the top. I guess cotter is not a cotter pin. It's just uh, it was like a little double groove. You can see it here in this kit that I had. I ordered two of them. Uh, there's just a little bevel groove there on the end, and then there's just this little uh, clip. All right, guys, same as the other side. You got the uh, four millimeter screws here. There should be four of them. They look like uh, that. Uh, and you got your piece here. You're going to go ahead and take it, and I'm going to put that bottom screw in first, and then slide those clips in to make the headlight flush. All right, team, so it's just that easy. Got that screw barely in there, but hey, it's enough to kind of hold it up. I put that, um, slide this up here, slid this in so that's even. And then this here is gonna get better when I put that clip in here. Uh, so, so next is gonna be to put that little push pin right there in that hole, just as I showed you on the other side. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, so here's the push pin. As you can see right there, I got the little clip in there, and then all you gotta do is sorry, line it up and just push it in, and that's it. All right, back down here zoom out so now we'll see how well this fits now of all the wiring that i shoved in through here but i'm um, you can see where some of the wires are that i ran for the uh this you won't have in yours unless you did like i did for the heated grips and the tpms sensor but yep i'm gonna push this up here maybe loosen that back just a little bit to get a little bit of play put these four bolts in right here i got them sitting right there as i said before they're four millimeter high so apparently I say all right a lot. I just realized that. So sorry, everybody who stuck with me. Um, so next is gonna be using the, uh, what was it? Three millimeters. You got the three bolts down here. 
as you can see one two and then three and I put them in hand tight and then I just come back with uh, the three millimeter wrench and tighten them up after that all we got left are the five screws up there and then the fairings back on and it looks just like it did when I took it off so I got it in the three screws well, once again you just want to make sure that this is nice and and flush with the inner piece that's in here and it is um, we'll be getting to this EvoTech piece here in a second I want to get this top piece in that side piece on and then we'll put the EvoTech in and uh, we'll be done all right so eight millimeter uh, two and a half hex just like on the other side the eight millimeter is going to go down there and the two and a half is going to go up here and apparently i'm going to straighten that up a little bit and line that up and uh then that piece will go in here all right for this piece you got three screws you got your uh random phillips and then uh two more of those two and a half millimeters um you slide this back in the silver screw should fit into that hole right there and then the other two just like the other side should fit there and there i'll uh I'm gonna go ahead and just pop this in real quick and then uh, I'll pop this back in and then we'll get to the, putting that last piece of the, the um, radiator guard in. All right, four millimeter hex screws, two of them. Black one on the top, silver one goes down here on the bottom. Same thing as the other side, you got that hook there that hooks up into there and then this slides forward. Uh, one thing I will say, I forgot to mention about this guy earlier and uh, if you're still here, that's cool. Uh, the MIA module, um, once I clipped it in, some people say you have to do a firmware update to get it to work. Uh, I did not experience that. It worked perfectly fine without it. And the module I bought was not even from an Aprilla dealer. It was from a Moto Guzzi dealer because uh, Aprilla dealers seem to be sold out of it, but every once in a while you'll find a Moto Guzzi, oops, not even looking at it, Moto Guzzi dealer that has the exact same part um, and it's you know in stock as opposed to waiting 10 months like we have to for every other part. Uh, Alright, I'm going to snap this in real quick and then we'll get back to the last bit of installing the uh, radiator guard. And just like that guys, it's like it never came off. So it's, it's like I said, it's not even really that big of a deal and I get the added benefit of the motorcycle being 9000% cleaner minus the dust that I can never get off the wheels. So, when I look up here, it really does not look that bad. And uh, I can actually still kind of reach my hands-ish, fat hands into there. So next up on the instructions was to take this piece here that came with it, and you find this little um, dimpled spot, and this just slides onto um, this piece here like so and that's all there is and then you got one two screws so there's one screw there's the other screw and then all we're gonna do is uh, reach up in there align those screws and screw it down and uh, that should be it and it looks like a three millimeter uh, here's a four yeah four is too big so I'm gonna get my three millimeter Allen uh, screw it in there and give you a final picture and if you stuck around all the way to the end of this uh, I'm sorry. Uh, hopefully you skipped ahead to find out if it would fit with the uh, fairing on or if you should put it on first um, Looks like you do not need to put it on before you put the fairing on just go ahead and follow the uh, the shitty little picture diagram um, It kind of sort of works once you can figure out what they're actually drawing in the shitty little diagram. I kind of wish they would have used the diagram photos and then uh, the hand-drawn ones and then actually took like a picture of it and like circled the part. It would have probably made the process 90 million times easier to understand. But you know, EvoTech I guess and their infinite wisdom. Uh, yeah, well I mean it's just like a Prilla using nine different types of bolts. Apparently they know something that the rest of us uh, just don't. All right, let me get this on. All right, so there it is with the bottom piece installed. It will, looks like, rattle a little bit. I mean, it's not going to come out or go anywhere, but 
uh, maybe that's how it's supposed to be. I tried to uh, see if maybe this little angled piece here went behind the lip here, but when I angled it back down there, it, it didn't feel right. So I guess that's how it goes. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. Uh, the EvoTech radiator guards in. What I left to do now is uh, put on the seat and uh, take her for a ride. And lastly, concluding up the video, in case anybody was wondering how this will look when I'm done, uh, still not a ton of, ton of bad wireage. I mean, it looks okay. It all fits just fine. You got that piece in there, and uh, heated grips are in, working. Everything, uh, everything is good there. So I got my heated grips now. I got my um, TPMS thing that I'm gonna hang and take the sticky off. Stick right there. And I'll be able to see, oh, I'm sorry, right there. And I'll be able to see my tire pressure while I'm riding. And uh, tire, you know, if the tire's getting hot, it gives you warnings if the, if, because uh, it does temperature too. And it, it also does a uh, battery when you hit the down button, you can see what your battery voltage is. And then uh, from there, well, I'm pretty much set. I got my guard protector on there. Um, and the tail tidy here is already on there. Uh, can't really think of much else a uh, guy yeah, could want. Uh, yeah, no more squeaky brake. I'm, I'm pretty solid. This this would be a good ride now for, uh, you know, until the next oil change at 16,000 miles or whatever and uh, uh, cussing out uh, Prilia for having that stupid little uh, service light thing. Uh, Alright, thanks for watching. Oh, <laughs> one more thing I don't um, something that anybody could really do I 3d printed like uh, one of these little holders here and you can kind of see underneath there I pulled out one of the screws but there's a uh, what is that like a, a m3 screw one of those little sets so you can buy these little brass sets that uh, screw screw into and if you heat it up like drill a little hole in the seat and heat it up and just push it down it'll melt down and come level with the seat and then from there you take like uh, one of these Apple AirTag things and uh, you take this little 3D printed holder and just screw it down and you got an AirTag under your seat to uh, be able to find it and uh, that's that TVMS sensor because it can't connect. Um, and uh, I think it, I think it's it's a good thing to, 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 to have on there. I don't know if it really matters if, if the bike was stolen. Who knows if you'd ever really want it back anyway. Um, definitely won't hear the beeping while they're driving. Uh, maybe when they stop, they might get an alert that they got an air tag or something with them. Uh, which case, they would have to ditch the seat and ride on top of the uh, the paperwork, assuming they can get the seat off without the key. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's all I got. That's that's pretty much everything I've I've done to her. Uh, all right, bye.